Uh, it wasn't TV, it wasn't Congress, it wasn't the American people. The experts say that talk radio was responsible for the outcome of the last election. And my first guest is a man who claims he single-handedly elected Bill Clinton. Uh, there are guards downstairs. There's no use coming around the studio trying to get at him. A New York radio institution now going nationwide. Not now. He's been out there going around. Irascible, irreverent, irresponsible, frankly. Don Imus. Well, six months. Thanks for coming. See, he's been complaining about coming to Fort Lee for six months, right? Yeah. Well, there's... Was it bad? Yes. Yeah, so well, it was not. You just told me it was not bad. There's right? no point me being here. There's a, I mean, I have nothing to hump. This I, could be the end of your career. Have, no, but I mean, <laughs> it's just... Well, what? I appreciate it because okay. I have done your show. And it yeah. is easier, I must admit, but it's also earlier. Yeah, you just have to pick the phone up. Yeah, I but know. i got to do it at 5 in the morning or something, yeah. 6 in the morning. I mean, at least this is noon. You can We're taping. And you... It's one of those things when somebody from your office called and said, would you like to do the show? And, of course, you said no. No, I said yes because yeah. it was about three months ahead. I got you. And then when you get closer on the calendar, yeah, I mean, you say... You'll agree to anything because I figure either I'll die... <laughs> Bob Wright will fire you, or, you know. You almost got me fired. No, actually, you didn't. You almost got yourself fired. No, you got me into that and then sold me out. Once the press called, you said, well, the guy's an idiot. What do I care what he says? Well, I did think it was idiotic. For you, you're the president of CNBC. Right. And for you to suggest that, that if you're a lawyer from Arkansas, you shouldn't stand too close to Hillary Clinton, I thought was, you were just asking for trouble, weren't you? <laughs> actually, I almost didn't get fired because other people in the network thought it was funny and had called me prior to the White House demanding me be fired. But the White House seems to not have a big sense of humor. No. Am I right? Well, I don't think anymore, no. Why? Well, I, I just... Are you going to be able to get him reelected? You take responsibility for getting him elected. Are you going to be able to do it again? I mean, this is really... The real test of Imus is going to be whether you can pull this off twice. Well, no, I'm, 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 I'm a Dole guy. Oh, you've gone over. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I know you like Dole, but I didn't know you'd already just sold poor Bill out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In a heartbeat. <laughs> I, mean, he's a, I mean, it's just... <laughs> He's down the street. Yeah, he huh? couldn't get on my program if he paid, you know. If he oh, bought oh. time, he couldn't get on. So. Hey, you know, they never did put him back on, which was just, uh, sort of stupid, because uh, I think that that was the best thing he had going for him, which well, is no, a little they, frightening. Well, they did put him back on a few times. Did they? Yeah. In fact, they, they, had, uh, they, had, a, they, they had us both on the Today Show one morning. So. Why do you like Dole? I think he's one of, well, I think he's an extraordinary person, one. Right. One of the most, I, I guarantee you, you will never... There will never be any tapes, any audio tapes right. of Bob Dole talking to some bimbo about <laughs> Mario Cuomo. Or, That's true. You know, That's he's true. one of the most ethical, moral people, and he's smart. He is. Actually, uh, this will come as a shock, but Richard Nixon said he was the smartest man in Washington. Now, that isn't a great endorsement to some people, but on the other hand, being smart is important. Yeah, and I'm, but I, I think he's got a good, he's, got, he's, a, he's a good guy. Yeah, a good, a good heart. Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I worked with George Bush in '88, but uh, but Bob Dole had. I was talking with Dole, and I I told him I didn't want to work with him at the time because I wanted to be his third media consultant because he would fire the first two no matter what. It's just his personality. Uh, I think he's actually gotten over that. He's had a couple of employees that have lasted longer than 18 months. Well, his, they talk about this dark side, but no, like that's that's like, a little nonsense. I mean, actually, yeah. he's a very funny guy, as you know. And, it's like uh, your dark side. Yeah, that's right. I have a dark side, and almost got me fired. <laughs> Thanks to you and my dark side. So your book is in the shoot now. I mean, it's gone. It's off the charts. This is well, his it's book. Spent, it's spent two Probably. months on the New York Times bestseller list on every other list in the country. And but did they cheat you or did you get paid? I mean, did you make money? It's with uh, Simon & Schuster, and, uh, and they conduct that publishing house much as, uh, in spite of Sumner Redstone, much as organized crime does. And you, you, you can get paid quicker from a record company than you can from a publisher. Why That's you, why, what is it? Well, because they're crooks, and because they'll, they'll tell. I got a letter from, from one of these weasels the other day. Now, this is a book that's been on the bestseller list for two months, and I, I personally signed 10,000 copies of it. Uh, somebody told me, one of the young women in makeup said that you came over to New Jersey, so you have been here before. To sign your cheesy book, you got yeah. over here, no complaining. But, yeah. of course, to do my show, no, you had to complain. Yeah. But they said there were lines around the building, so you must have spent a lot of time signing 10,000. Yeah, there, were several, there were several signings, one in Boston and uh, uh, another one someplace in Massachusetts. That, uh, they lasted eight and nine hours. Wow. So the, but they, they, I get a letter, and they say, well, uh, there's still a lot of books in the stores, and uh, we're anticipating some returns, so... Would you be willing to do some more? 
Well, I mean, I predicted this months ago. So, so. in other words, they want you out there flogging it, but, but they're not paying you, basically. Now, how does Rush, Lim Rush Limbaugh made about $8 million from his book and got paid? What and happened? If, and if you, re if you remember, when, when they Rush's first book, it was yeah. Simon & Schuster. Right. They got caught with their pants down because they printed very few copies. Right. And it sold out in 20 minutes. Right. And so there was a big lag there. Well, then he sold, what, a couple million books. Yeah. So if you sell a couple million books, you're going you're gonna to get paid. We sold maybe three, four hundred thousand. So. Uh, Plus, there's a big difference between the fiction list and the, uh, yeah. the non-fiction list. Yeah, so. that's true. I could sell on the non-fiction. You can make up a topic. Yeah, and I mean, get out there and Oprah Winfrey's cook is how to a, talk to your cat. Yeah, I mean, so. this is fairly. It is tougher on. So fiction. to get a novel on the list is hideous. Yeah. How many How many cities are you in now? Fifty. Fifty, mm -hmm. growing. Yeah, but uh, it's morning radio to clear uh, to clear stations. In the morning is very much, tough because they want the local commercials. Yeah. They want the local time. So it's much more difficult than any other time of the day. So, mm -hmm. so I'm surprised we're in that many, but we're doing. For example, we're number two in New York behind Stern. Uh, we're number one in Boston, primarily because he's not on in the morning in Boston. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so there are many places around the country. San Diego, we're doing great, and Sacramento, and all over the country. The question everybody asks is, how can you talk dirty and do racist things on your radio show and still have top politicians show up on the show and have to apologize? Do you think the day is going to come when they're going to go after you like they did Bob Grant and say, you know, uh, you can't have, you can't say, uh, you can't do parodies and have important people on the show? You've gotten away with that, and you do it well. Why? Talk dirty and uh, do racist humor. Well, you, do give, give you, do, you do some penis jokes and you well, do. Well, yeah, but I mean, I mean, those are kind of. Uh, and you not, do it, some, uh, and, and you kind of do. I mean, like Russia's parody. Now you claim you like Russia. Now Russia's look. Imus is obviously a racist, and he doesn't have the guts. To, <laughs> and he doesn't. And he, and he doesn't have the guts to come out and say it. I yeah. mean, there are some people think since you don't have the guts to say it, you put the words in in the characters' voices. Is that right? Why is Rush whining, by he's the way? He's not whining. He's no, he, he was joking about it. He just well, said, he, was he said, no, he said, no, he said when, when, when Imus, Imus has a .8 in <laughs> Washington and I have a 7.7, .7, and yeah. when Imus gets up to a 3, I'll worry. Anybody can get ratings right. uh, when you're on uh, at noon. I mean, that's mm -hmm. no big deal. And, uh, and uh, the, 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 the Rush parodies we do are, are just brilliant satire. So, in fact, they're not. The guy doesn't even sound. The good news is he doesn't sound like him. So, <laughs> why are we? But anyway, why did I come over back. here? Let's talk about racism. Here I was. I that felt was sorry for you when Mike Wallace told you you were fat. I'm thinking <laughs> uh, that's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> Mike and, uh, Wallace didn't uh, did ask me why I was overweight. He didn't say I was fat. He said he I. Said he asked were, me he why I was were, overweight. I said, said I eat too were, much, and then I asked him why he was the pant load. No, I see. He said he said I was overweight, and I said Mike, you tell me why you're depressed. Now I'd like to know why you're depressed. And my wife says, my wife likes you, you see. Really? I like her, too, yeah, by the so way. She's, so she's upset because Mike calls you fat, you know? Yeah, that was rude, right? And so here's a guy, he's 76 years old, he's sitting there, how long has he got? And you say to him, <laughs> so Mike, uh, you're depressed, huh? Thinking about killing and then, yourself? <laughs> yeah, and then you say, have you ever thought about killing yourself? And well, I, first of all, he's on medication, he's probably got the pills in his he pocket. He did, his ticker went off while we were sitting there when I started pressing. But, no. you know, you go after my weight, you get you take your chances. So I have this image of Mike Wallace and William Styron up in uh, Martha's Vineyard pulling each other out of the water. At I least, know. Yeah, William Styron got a book out of it, and Mike is just still depressed. He's, <laughs> he's, he's still, still bummed out. He he's comes a, over here, he takes a cheap shot at you, and you hammer him. Now, I haven't done anything to you. No, that's and, right. And I don't mean to hammer you. I'm and just you're asking starting you. to me about our, our making no, fun of Russ. Let me just say this to Russ. Shut up and get over it. He makes $25 million a year. What does he care? That's true. Yeah. That's true. He's, he sounds like, you know what, Bill Clinton, he whines. Me. I got a note from him. He says, but cut me some slack and stop me, you know. Well, shut up about it. Are I mean, you kidding me? He did, really did? Yeah. He did? Cut me some slack for Christmas. And my message back was, shut, please shut up. Yeah, just but how come you didn't like say that when they asked to get me fired? Oh, you were on their side then. No, I wasn't. I you was, did. You just I said I didn't want you to be fired. You. Why would huh? I want you to be fired? Huh? You, I mean, here you tripled the, uh, didn't you triple the revenue here? Yes. So they're not going to fire you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now I come over here and you're attacking me. No, no, I'm not attacking you. I have a, tell me why I attacked you. First of all, I have 10 million listeners around the country. Okay. And, I and think there's about they... 80 people watching this show. And you are and a dessert. Be beginning tomorrow and... morning, you're a dead man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, but Russia help. He's got twenty million. Yeah, but he's got more. He's, he's no, got no, no. Listen, Doug. Listen. You we know that Russia. I did not attack you. You did. You're attack too you. thin skinned. You accused me of being You're a racist. Very, and I not did having... not. I said. I said. You know, I asked you a question. Are you a racist who hides behind parodies? No. Good. End okay. of discussion. Was that an attack? 
Well, yeah, 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 you're a little smarter than I am. I'll have to think about it. When I see the tape, I'm sure I'll, I'll realize that I was attacked. No, you weren't attacked. Actually, the truth of the matter is, when I said one word, I'm a I meant it. You're an institution, and you're an original, and you're great. Okay, we'll be back with Imus. Stay with us. We this, think. This, he may leave. He's a little thin-skinned. This network can't fail. Morning. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm all right. Let me ask you something. What the hell is going on down there in that White House? <laughs> what do you mean you've lost your focus? <laughs> I haven't lost my focus. Don Imus insulting this network, saying we only have 80 people watching. We happen to know we have 133 people. I didn't insult you. You attacked me. I didn't attack you. Tell me how I attacked you. Well, I don't know. You're I'll pouting to, I'll over have there. The, I'll have to see the You're tape. You're pouting. I, I did not attack There's you. There's the worst thing you've ever done. I'm watching the other night, and you have Susan Lucci on. I like Susan Lucci, and no, I was really? trying to hit on her. I mean... And you told her she was going to win an Emmy. Absolutely. I'll she's tell not her anything she wants to hear. But, I mean, she, she doesn't even believe that. She no, can't, but, she's not going to win anything. The but moment, it made her feel better for the moment. She cannot act. I sold out. No, look, she can act. She can act. Have you seen her in those Ford commercials? Well, she's not supposed to act. Yeah, she's supposed no, to be Susan I mean, Lucci there. But, I mean, she's my age. She looks like she's trying to dress up for no, she looks. Uh, I got news for you. Her face, I've sat this close to her, too. And well, I'll fine. tell you, if I had a choice of kissing either one of you, you're not even in the running, pal. Who's the guy in the dressing room? Can we, what was the director? Can we get him out here? <laughs> no, she's not supposed to act in the commercial. She's supposed to be herself in the commercial. You don't Listen, like... I have a Ford truck. Excuse yes, me. you do? I was going to get rid of it just as a result of those. Uh, I just guess, because of the... You know, I, I guess I, she's probably a nice little person. I'm it sure is, she is. I mean, there's no reason to attack her. There's, that's right. Yeah. You picked on her unnecessarily. Tried to humiliate her. Do people know that you, have a, that you and Rush have a deal that you... That you produce this television show? Yeah, it's very, very public. Oh, okay. Executive well, I just wanted people show. watching to know because no, no, you're that's hammering right. me. Well, he's also my friend. I'm not hammering him on that. I'm, I just asked a question. Limbaugh. I just <laughs> poor little Rush gets all upset because we make fun he, of him. He's not upset at all. He thinks it's funny. Oh, okay. But he doesn't think the guy sounds like him. Fortunately, <laughs> he thinks. Well, he no, sounds I don't like think people sound like me either. But I mean, no, nobody does sound like you. I mean, it really <laughs> is. That is true. That is true. Uh, did you? Uh, were you weird as a kid, or were you all right? I mean, were you like normal as a child, and then got strange later, or? Well, um, no, I was a, no, I was a, you know. I mean, a lot of people would think you're a little strange now. No, I'm not. I'm just, it's... No, I know you're not, but, uh, but you seem, last time we met, we had lunch with Rudy Giuliani. Oh. You remember? How's but he it... doing as mayor? What's your read on him? Well, I like him. I think he's, yeah. yeah. You think he should have endorsed Cuomo? Yeah, no. Well, it wasn't good. That was a bad idea. Yeah. Why? I mean, Will what... he recover with the Republicans? <clears throat> well, you'd know better than I would, but... Yeah. I'm I don't... just curious. I like other people's point of view. Anyway, were you strange as a child? Or were you very normal? Oh, no. I was a funny kid. You know? I mean, you're like, your brother sounds fairly normal on the radio. Is he normal? You thought deliverance, right? <laughs> Is that Fred? That's Fred. <laughs> the witch guy. Fred, Fred's a guy in the woods. <laughs> Aintree? That's <laughs> where ever don't go to Aintree. <laughs> That's Fred. He got a party mouth on him, don't he? That's I, I, I was listening to you the other morning, and it sounds as if, uh, like uh, you, your wife wanted donuts and you went out and got your truck and drove to town. Is that true? Because she wanted something to eat? Wanted donuts? No. I My truck was in the drive. We, I, was, I, we was, uh, uh, I live in Manhattan, but we were in a weekend in Connecticut. You didn't drive to Connecticut for the donuts. You no. The truck was in the driveway. and. She just Canada. mentioned she wanted chocolate chip cookies. Oh, it was it chocolate chip yeah. cookies, yeah. So I had to open the gate to back the truck out to put it in the garage, and I figured long as I'd just get her. I like her, so. I don't blame you. I mean, yeah. I, she's a beautiful woman. Now, do you uh, do that whenever she has a whim like this? Or do you, uh, no, do you, do I don't. Do like go out and get in the truck? <laughs> say, what do you oh, need? No. Now? You, when you get home at night, do you say, do you, do you need anything? Before I... I would, yeah, I like her. I mean, yeah. well, there's nothing not to like about her. Yeah. So. Does she think you're funny, or is she starting to get irritated? Well, she, no, she likes me. She thinks I'm funny. 
<laughs> I mean, I am amusing sometimes. You are amusing. You're, 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 you're a very funny guy. And sometimes actually. I'm not. You know, but no, but most people, do people think you're serious sometimes when you are being funny and to get their feelings hurt? Yeah. Sort of like you did when I was kidding you a few minutes ago. And you I didn't get feelings. my feelings hurt. I just couldn't understand why I would come over here and you would attack me <laughs> when all I've I ever just done wanted to make it. I wanted to make it a memorable trip because well, you resisted is. me for six I, I know, but... months to come over here. Well, uh, How come I... you never invite me on your show anymore? I well, because be you turned into a <laughs> That's why we... <laughs> <laughs> thank God we're on. Thank God we're on. Now wait. On the one hand, you say I shouldn't say these things because I'm a network president, and on the other hand, you say I'm a wuss. Or no, close. I don't. I don't think you're a wuss. I, 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 you know. Yeah, but I mean, you have a. Vi you, see, the the whole the whole purpose of of my hideous program is to goad people into saying hideously inappropriate things that as soon as they hang the phone up, they'll regret. I mean, yesterday we had Bill Bradley you, you on. Have, all right. He stabbed the president in the backs, you know, and I asked him, I said, is anybody going to challenge him in his own party? He said, well, we're going to wait six to nine months and let's see. Oof. And then he, and then I said, well, would it be you? He said, you know, anybody's liable to step up to the plate. Wow. So so there's articles in all of the newspapers yeah. this morning, and he's he, he, he now is writing it off as early morning banter, you know? Mm -hmm. Some kind of... Sort uh, of what I did. <laughs> some kind of badinage, you know? And, uh, <laughs> but I mean, uh, he's... Uh, so, so that that was the case with you, you know. We get you to say something that's uh, no, but I did that deliberately. I mean, I, I'm I sure you did. I don't so. care. But uh, uh, no, but you obviously you're not going to do that now. So it's like Al D'Amato. Al, Al was great when he was Mad Dog D'Amato. Well, no, I give I gave up my freedom of speech voluntarily because of a great deal of money. I mean, yeah. there is a, there are trade offs in life, right? And you say, at least you're honest about it. You say they're going to pay me a lot of money to not have freedom of speech. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll I can forego that a little bit. And, but you have been unsuccessful in getting Tim Russert or uh, Jeff Greenfield to say anything so inappropriate that they should be humiliated or forced to be fired by the White House. Why have you, if the purpose of your program is to do that? Well, uh, uh, Jeff's a different uh, case. He's, uh, he's a lot smarter than almost anybody. I agree with you. Jeff uh, happened to write a column once that defended me on something, and he was the only guy in America who did it no. uh, at a time when when it was useful, it was very helpful to me for him to do that. And uh, Russert's a fat loser, so. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he's for Buffalo or what? You're, 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 oh, man. No, you were on Meet the Press, weren't you? i got to take a break. We'll be back with Radio Institution Don Imus. Stay with us. Let me tell you what you got. You got a great big old fat butt. And I love every ounce of it. Thank uh, you ounce very much. We're measuring your butt in pounds, sweetheart. <laughs> Tight shot here. The man's spilling over the lips. We're back. Uh, the man behind the outrageous... Actually, you have a very sort of uh, whiskey voice. Did you drink a lot at one time? I might have had a cocktail or two. A cocktail or two? Yeah. Why would a grown man get into drugs? I know you've talked about that, I guess, on the air, but, I mean, was it something inside of you or was it the outside pressures made you get into drugs? And then you got clean. I mean, I'm drugs. not suggesting... What did you, what, what's the drug thing? What, what drugs? Uh, yeah, you went... Uh, didn't, weren't you taking... Uh, I did a couple lines of cocaine in Elaine's one night and suddenly I'm a drug addict? <laughs> Jesus, God, what, I mean, what are you? No, no, I ask you because you've talked about it on your show. It isn't well, like this is a, new. That's a showbiz deal. Oh, that's a joke. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, are you serious? Well, I had a little drug problem, but I mean... It's you know, oh, you're over it. Yeah. It's is it easy to kick? Cocaine? Yeah. Cocaine was for me, but I mean, I wasn't doing like a, you know, an eighth a day. But Yeah. Um, drinking was difficult. To was it? Stop. Playing. How's your health? You all right? You look actually better than everybody talks about you. I mean, well, I'm fine. My I, People talk about you. They say, you know, on your show, your guys around you and everything are always talking about you're going to pass away any day. Well, they'd now. like me to pass away. No, they would. Hey, those guys, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding I, me? Uh, I had a lung operation about a... Did you put your gum on the bottom of my table? No, I'm just holding my gum. <laughs> oh, all right. That's good. I thought you put it on the bottom of the table. No, I put it. Did you see this? I put it equal, like this. Took his gum. <laughs> no, anyway. no, I didn't. I was just holding my gum. All right, go ahead. What you were saying? I uh, had a lung operation about a year and a half ago. And yeah, no, that was serious too. Yeah, it was not a pleasant experience. So, took it's, a long uh, time. Are you well? I mean, you're over that. Yeah. Did you fine. lose a little lung or not? Are you? No, I'm fine. Really? Yeah. And I had some. Um, 
I had some bubbles on the top of it, and they had to scrape them off because it wouldn't stay up. It's really unpleasant. But now I, I have. I'm back running, so. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Deirdre runs, right? And she, she your, is that your wife's name? Yeah. And she runs. She's a. She ran the marathon. You went down and. Three thirty. You went down and hobbled up to the finish line to hug her when she came over, right? Fine. She ran it in three thirty. I was. She that's ran the. Good. She, two years ago, she ran it in four twenty four, and this year she ran it three thirty two. So. Mm -hmm. Next year she could win it. Right. Why do you not like heavy people? You pick on heavy people a lot. Like me, I mean, like you. Oh, Jesus, what's the matter? God, what no, are you, you no, 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 you always say No, I mean, I, what are you, I don't do you know that. pick on heavy people? I, I don't pick on heavy you people. You do. You call the president a fat pant. Well, I mean. He is sort of. I mean, a guy for a guy who jogs, at least I admit I don't jog. The guy jogs every day. Yeah, that's really, uh, I don't that's, understand that. That's offensive, that. but yeah. No. If you jogged every day, you have no excuse for it. I have no. Tell me why you like politics so much. What is it that fascinates you? Because your show is really one of the most interesting political shows that I've ever heard or is around today. I mean, well, it's it's the it's it's live. It's real theater. You know, it's. Um, I got interested in politics because of Mort Saul and Lenny Bruce. You know, it's funny. You, I I did read that you you love Mort Saul. I've known Mort. I actually managed Mort's career at one time. That that's does a, explain some that things. Does, it? No, it's true. He and I were close friends, and he was going through a time, and I was uh, doing some management back in the early 70s, and uh, and I uh, worked with Mort because he's sort of a hero of mine, too. You no, know, he's mean, still funny, you know. Oh, he's very funny. I, I saw him at Mr. Kelly's in Chicago, that old nightclub in Chicago one afternoon, read the afternoon paper and get up on the stage and do about 50 straight minutes of original, new material with no writers. I mean, that's... The guy he's was a, good. He's a little like Dick Cavett, though, um, in that they, uh, at least with me, there's, there's, both of them are a lot smarter than I am, and so they're thinking, they're way ahead of you, you know. And mm -hmm. So I was on Cavett's uh, hideous shows. That's on, on CNBC, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you did do that show. I like him, but he, boy, man, he's, uh, there's just nobody home there. Uh, well, he's low key. He's brilliant, but I mean, you know, he's just a million different places. Yeah, he likes to tell you who he knows. Like he told me, he said, I saw Don Imus. He came out here and did my show <laughs> during I, I, my interview. Well, actually, he, he came over. They brought a film crew over, too. Is that right? Yeah. I've also known Dick. I used to book Dick as a stand-up comic on the Mike Douglas show in 1965. And he would, and he didn't get many laughs even then. But Dick is a great guy. I've known him for 25 years, so he'll well, stay brilliant. employed here. He is brilliant. He's brilliant, and he's funny. He's, he's got a great voice, and he makes most of his money from the yeah. AT&T commercials, I think, or whatever those commercials are. But he's, uh, he's really, he's, he's, <clears throat> he's on shaky ground, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, he makes it, <laughs> he makes you nervous to be around him, you know. I mean, I, I like him a lot. I mean, I don't hang out with him, obviously, but I mean. Have you watched Charles Grodin's show on CBC? Yeah. And? Just hideous. Yeah, you don't like it. It's just hideous. Oh. Would you, you know? like to come over and fill in some night? And no, do some TV? I don't, I don't, I don't want to be on television. TV? Why I don't not? Want to, because I, there's no reason for me to be on television, which is evidenced by this, by my experience <laughs> here today. There's just. <laughs> How long will it be before you do another television interview? Never. I'll just. Well, no, I, this is fine, but. Uh, there's I don't. Uh, there's no reason for me to be on television. I mean, I don't have any interest in but it. But you're an interesting looking guy. Yeah, but I don't have a good cue. I think. I think for, like Rush. I mean, if I don't even, if I see Rush on television, he just, he looks, this big, fat, friendly, and he looks good on television. Well, part of it says. is, forget the weight. See, you went after the well, weight whatever. again. You started attacking the fat. Nobody's just fat. Said, just, just, he's, a little, he's a little overweight. Yeah, but it doesn't mean I don't like him. I just mean I like the way he looks on well, television. Well, maybe it's because he's smiling. You never smile. Well, yeah, but I like Letterman. Letterman doesn't smile a lot. Oh, he smiles. He's got, otherwise, I would have no idea that he had a picket yeah, fence. Yeah, but I mean, there. so there's certain people who work well on television. I don't have any interest in it. There's no money in it unless you're Letterman or somebody. I mean, there's there's no money in being on CNBC unless you run CNBC. So that's true. I would imagine. <laughs> you know, Charles that's Grodin true. can be making no money. Huh? Oh, he's doing all right. And, it's, and the, you know, the program is. He's, I'm sure he's a nice guy, and I guess he's a, a fine actor. I don't he's know. He's only. He's been on two but weeks. The Give show him a break. Sucks. It's hideous. We're getting tremendous response from the reviewers. From who? The reviewers. Oh, Tom Shales. Tom Shales. Tom Shales is such a suck up that is frightening. He must want something. Because, I mean. <laughs> Marvin Kitman. Well, I'm, I'm very loyal to Kitman. So. so am I. I mean, you know, Kitman is the. I think he's the best reviewer around. And he says that Groden's funny. I well, know I this mean, has started, startled you, but. Well, I've seen it a couple. I just watched it briefly. You know, you're surfing around. Well, it's brand new. Give it a chance. He doesn't we'll come back shut and up, and he talks about Jack Parr, and I mean, shut up. 
<laughs> he had Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. All right. Maybe that was Tom Snyder. Had no, that was, I think that was Tom Snyder. Right. How do you like Roy and Dale? Well, what is there not well, to like Well, you dress about... like a cowboy. I well, thought no, I, I want to I mean, know if you liked Roy and Dale or who you liked. But you I, well, there's nothing not to like about Roy and Dale. Oh, but were they your favorites? I mean, was it Hopalong Cassidy? Or... <laughs> 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 Gene Autry, you talk about a pant load. Even yeah. then, did you notice that? Well, yeah. He's a heavy. Johnny Mac Brown. They had big rear ends, those guys. I guess, yeah. I'm, I'm really not much into men's rear ends, Roger, but <laughs> maybe you are. <laughs> maybe there's a reason that your life is a shambles, your personal life. <laughs> maybe you want to. Hey, some look time who's talking, talking about, about a personal life. <laughs> you know, listen. I'm, I'm happily married, and uh, things are going along fine, and I'm making almost 80 grand a year now, so. Hey, I heard you said you were making 100 grand when you were making 80. Is that true? When you came to NBC, Absolutely. they paid they paid you eighty, Absolutely. and you went around telling your friends you were Absolutely. making a hundred. And you know what? The first what? the first rating book, and I was I was two weeks out of a ranch in Arizona, and I I I'd never been to New York. They paid me eighty grand. The first rating book came out. I got a lawyer, and I made him give me a hundred. So, Did you really? Yeah, absolutely. So. So we can't really tell. What do you make now? For me. How much do you make? I make eighty thousand dollars a year. So. <laughs> Still making eighty thousand dollars a year. Where are we on time? Do I have time? Okay, Hopefully we got to wrap out. this up. We're out of time. Okay, uh, now if you want, listen to Imus in the morning because uh, uh, you will hear him trash me, heavy people. Rush. No, no, he'll say he got attacked over here. <laughs> well, I'll have to replay this. This will be a cheap ploy by him to get me to replay the show to prove that he wasn't attacked because uh, he'll want to build the cum up on this so he can get a TV show. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Thanks for doing it. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. For... I, I really do appreciate it because I know no, it was a big. Don't. No, I do. It, it took a big thing out of the middle of your day. You had to get off your rear end for, you know, an, an hour. I mean, this was not such a big deal. All right. Back with a talented actor, director, playwright, Austin Pendleton. Stay with us. Be nice.